Good day and welcome to another session of the course Enterprise Architecture. I'm very happy to welcome to you Professor Nixon Ojara from the Namibia University of Science and Technology. Thank you. <coughs> he is an expert in enterprise architecture in the theoretical and practical aspects of this. And well, the first question to you would be, what are the key concepts and ideas behind enterprise architecture? Um, okay, the perspective that I would like to bring today is to look at enterprise architecture strategy. Enterprise, there are various perspectives of enterprise architecture, but we want to focus on looking at enterprise architecture strategy. Uh, and the idea behind it, if you look at enterprise architecture strategy, the key concepts are related to three main things. The first one is what we call foundation for execution. And the focus of our foundation for execution is for organizations to be able to analyze and assess their capabilities. And from an IT perspective is to be able to assess the digital capabilities. Because all organizations, uh, whatever they are doing, there's a particular foundation that they are starting from. And uh, uh, for our interest is to be able to look at uh, what kind of processes already have been digitized uh, for you to be able to design your enterprise architecture. The other key concept related to enterprise architecture as strategy is to look at uh, the operating model for organizations to define what their operating model is. And the operating model is simply a way that the organizations deliver products and services to, to their customers. All organizations have different operating models. Uh, there are operating models at the enterprise level as well, uh, and you may also find operating models that are different at either the division, division level, the business unit level, or even at the depart departmental level. And lastly, in terms of key concepts, um, are concepts related to business process integration as well as business process standardization. Now, the extent to which uh, organizations integrate or standardize their processes, um, uh, define uh, the, the kind of enterprise architecture strategy that they have adopted. Uh, one of the topics about enterprise architecture is the way of standardization, or I might say how much you have to standardize and how much you have to integrate in a company. So what is the role of enterprise architecture in this regard? All right, let's, let's remember that uh, when you talk about standardization or integration, our focus is on the business processes uh, of the organization. Organizations have different uh, number of business processes. Some of them have to be automated or, or digitized. Uh, not all processes can be digitized. Therefore, uh, in settling for a particular operating model, the organization must uh, identify which are these processes that require to be digitized uh, and which are the processes that require to be integrated. So the extent of integration uh, of business processes and the extent of standardization again is linked to the nature of the operating model. Uh, for example, uh, research uh, has found that there are a number of operating models that are linked to those two key requirements of enterprise architecture. So you, you may find organizations that have low standardization as well as low, low integration. And this you typically find with organizations that operate uh, business units that are a little bit independent uh, from each other. They develop local applications and these local IT applications are managed uh, locally. But you can also find organizations that have high levels of standardization with low levels of integration. So when you talk about standardization, you're looking at to what extent are these transactions or these processes performed in a similar manner. Uh, for instance, if you take the example of DHL, which is a courier company, um, wherever you go, whether you are in Windhoek or you are in Flensburg or you are in Atlanta, uh, the way they provide service to you, the way they appear to the customer is the same. So that means their, their processes are standardized. Uh, however, the company does not share many customers. They don't share the same customers. So they don't have to have high integration as a result. They don't have to have shared data amongst the different offices. 
So the extent of integration and standardization actually define how the organization provide business or how they actually uh, how they, they transact with their with their customers. Other models, for for instance, the coordination operating model require that the integration is um, uh, data is highly integrated. So there is more sharing of data rather than uh, standardization of uh, of processes, uh, and that you typically find in financial services that require the cross selling of services to uh, you know different customers rather than standardizing processes. So uh, yes, the extent of integration and standardization actually is linked to how the organization operates. Do you perhaps have some, some <coughs> ideas about well, the integration standardization, how does this affect the operating model as you were, were pointing out, some, just some examples perhaps? Uh, let me give the example of uh, a social enterprise. Uh, you know, if you look at a social enterprise as an example, uh, one example that I normally give is uh, ecosandals.com. And what they do is to make sandals from recycled tires and they sell all over the world. Now, if you think about a company like that, the, the question to ask is, uh, what is more important to them? To share data or to standardize their, their processes? Now, remember that when they make samples, when they make sandals, they are unique to the customers. So for them, it's not about standardizing the process because each, each customer has unique requirements. So uh, standardization is not the key decision here. For them is how can we share data among us uh, with our distributors which are, who are based all over the world. Some are based in the UK, some are based in other parts of Europe. They also have distributors in Canada and the USA. Uh, so for them is about sharing data. And when you start talking about sharing data, that is uh, uh, focusing more on high levels of uh, uh, integration. So rather than going for a diversification, operating model which has low standardization and low uh, integration they would go f uh, they would go for a coordination uh, operating model which enables them to focus more on higher integration with uh, lower standardization of processes and as, I, and as I've mentioned it is low standardization because the products are designed uniquely for the needs of the customer what are the positive effects of an enterprise architecture or a good enterprise architecture for a company? I think, uh, again, research has confirmed uh, that um, those companies that formally define their enterprise architecture uh, have a lot of, get a lot of benefits. Uh, uh, higher profitability, for instance. Uh, but from my perspective, I think the formally defining your enterprise architecture provides the business with uh, what you call agility, business agility. The ability of the organization to respond to the changing business environment. We know there are now issues related to globalization. There's a lot of competition, not just locally for companies, but also internationally. How can they better prepare themselves to respond to the changing environment? And this requires that you understand your uh, capabilities and specifically for us digital capabilities and how you can use these digital capabilities to to respond to the environment so apart from uh, business agility and profitability we also enterprise architecture also helps in uh, measurement uh, measure, uh, measuring uh, business performance for instance so you need to know uh, what you are doing or where you are so that you are able to handle the the variability that comes from various business operations. If you know what you're doing by defining it well, defining that logic of operations, then you are able to manage the variability that comes from the operations of the business. Yeah. Okay, so very interesting. So as far as I understood, it's about enterprise architecture, about creating agility, about getting profitability, yes. to understand better the business um, mechanisms um, to improve the, the business yes. on uh, this enterprise architecture. Yes. yes, thank you very much, Professor. It was very interesting. Well, I hope you got some insights, further insights about what enterprise architecture is all about and about, well, why we should uh, go to enterprise architecture, why we should create an enterprise <coughs> architecture for a company. Thank you very much and good day. <laughs>